Good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And we have a very, very exciting topic to be discussing here today, which is uh, arguably something that's very universal, which is how do you how do you improve uh, your skills as a trader? How do you become a profitable trader? How do you become a consistently profitable trader? And today I'm going to provide a different view as to how you can potentially get there. Something that is personal to me, something that is personal to uh, a lot of professionals, actually, surprisingly, which is through the, the game of poker. So I want to talk a little bit about the parallels between trading and poker and why it can help you accelerate your path towards profitability for trading, especially if that is something that you are struggling with. Now, what we are here doing every single Thursday afternoon with these options education sessions is focus on helping you become a consistent and confident trader to help you grow your account. Now, this requires a well-rounded education. You can't just focus on technical analysis or just focus on options trading. You really need to have a comprehensive view of what it takes to be a consistent, profitable trader in the long run. And try to bring different perspectives, try to bring different viewpoints. Is that how you get there? Um, and this is certainly one of the sessions that I think fits in that particular category of an alternative view, but a view that is that is um, that is taken by a lot of professionals as to what you can potentially do to hone the skills that are required to uh, take on risk in the market and be profitable at the end of the day. Um, so as many of you see, especially if you're here for the first time here at Options Play, there is a chat window. Please feel free to join in and tell us a little bit about where you're from. As you can see, there's many of you that have already chimed into the chat window. Please let us know who, where you're joining from. As you can see, we have a vibrant community of traders all coming together to learn and, and become a, a more um, confident trader. And many of you have helped each other uh, support each other. So please join in into the chat window. As you can see, there are a lot of you here um, coming from all over the world. So please uh, join in and welcome if you are joining us for the first time. Now, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that I might use as example purposes during today's session. So what my goal here today is quite simple. My goal is to show you how to become a more profitable trader by learning the skills of poker. Um, and this is going to be broken down into two primary categories. Number one, which is position sizing, or you can think of it as bet sizing when you're playing poker. And learning the skills to manage your trading account the same way you would manage a, 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 um, um, poker chips um, to avoid uh, to avoid blowups and to hit and how to hit home runs. How do you become profitable uh, by avoiding those blowups and how do you actually hit those home runs? So position sizing is incredibly important for learning how to do that. The second thing we're going to learn is how the game of poker can help you build the emotion resiliency to actually follow through with these sets of rules that you'll learn because the rules are actually arguably really simple. Um, you would think that everyone would be able to follow these rules, but when it comes down to the actual um uh when the when the what's the right term the rubber hits the road why do people always fail to be able to follow these rules and why does poker um you know why is poker a game that can help you hone the specific skills to gain that emotional resiliency to be able to follow through on these specific rules when you are in a trade or when you are playing a hand of poker so Many of you are asking us, you know, when we do these sessions, are these sessions recorded? Can you get access to the slides? And the answer is both. Uh, yes, uh, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial here at Options Play if you don't already have an account. Uh, but we will send you an email this uh, weekend when we post the recordings to our YouTube channel. So you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest videos. You can, uh, we'll post both the link to the 
sign up to the Options Play platform that I'll show you here in a few minutes, as well as the link to the YouTube channel so that you can subscribe and get access to all of the recordings that we post on these Thursday afternoon sessions, as well as the other education sessions that we do throughout the week, okay? Um, you can also point your phone to that QR code if you want to sign up for that free 30-day trial. It's going to give you access to the tools that's going to help you um, implement some of the rules that I'm showing you during today's session, okay? So let's talk first about kind of the parallels between poker and trading because there are a ton of parallels that a lot of people, I think, are not familiar with. And once you kind of realize the differences between the two or the rather the similarities between the two, uh, you're going to see why poker is one of the one of the games that you can play to help you hone your skills for trading. So first of all, both like poker and trading, you have a finite amount of capital that you're trading with. Well, what that means is that you have to manage that limited amount of capital in order to prevent yourself from losing, uh, you know, blowing up your account or effectively losing all of your chips. I tend to find that when you're playing poker, because you actually see the stack of chips in front of you, uh, whether it's physically or, or whether you're playing online, but you actually see the stack in front of you, it makes the, the process of preserving that a little bit more real versus in a brokerage account, it's just a number on your screen. Um, you know, and, and you could always deposit more money. So it's not as tangible in terms of the, fi the finite capital that you have when you are uh, trading versus when you're trading po when you're playing poker. So learning to protect your capital is the number one thing that you have to learn how to do. Because if you blow up your account, game over. There's no chance in for you to be a profitable trader if you're blowing up your account left and right. So the first thing you have to learn is preserving capital. The second thing you want to have to that you have to learn in terms of a skill as a trader and as a poker player is success in both trading and poker playing comes from identifying when it is time to size up your bets and start trading larger or betting larger when the opportunities come. And it's one thing to spot the opportunity. It's another thing to be able to react to that appropriately and size accordingly. We actually tend to find that a lot of traders can identify the opportunity, but do not position themselves correctly when the opportunity arises, meaning when the time comes, they fail to bet a larger size. And, and actually, many times what we tend to find is that people reduce their exposure when the opportunity comes. We do kind of the counterintuitive things when it comes to protecting our capital and, and placing the bets when we need to be doing that. Um, and for for and the best example of that is when we should be cutting losses, we don't do that. We sometimes maybe even double down, hoping to make our money back. So when we should be reducing exposure, we do the exact opposite. And when a trade goes in our favor, instead of doubling down and, and actually trying to hit home runs, what we do is we take exposure off the table. We take profits too early. If you can if you can relate to that, press type one into the chat window if you can relate to that because. Those are the skill sets that you can learn how to um, overcome by playing poker. And then the last thing is managing emotions. Managing them allows you to focus on preserving capital until the conditions are right for sizing up. And the primary reason that I think poker is the best game for helping you hone the skills for trading is because you can play hundreds of hands in a matter of a few hours uh, versus for you to have a few hundred trades under your belt, that could take you years to get that. So what you can basically do is shortcut kind of the learning process, the the, the skills that you need to hone your emotion resiliency in a, in, in a matter of weeks playing poker that would sometimes take years or decades to learn as an investor, as a trader. You just can't trade that many trades in a day as you can play poker hands. And you, you certainly can't can't trade um, as consistently in identifying opportunities as you can playing poker hands. You can play a poker hand every minute or so. Um, and that's really what makes poker playing uh, the a, a really fantastic game at helping you hone the skills for uh, learning how to trade. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. All right. So, some of you might know this already, but Susquehanna, the number two largest 
um, market making firm in the world for trading options. So when you execute your options trade, nearly half of those trades go to Citadel, uh, and nearly the other half goes to Susquehanna. Um, you know, these are the two largest market makers in the world. And what's really interesting about Susquehanna is that they train all of their traders to learn how to trade by playing poker. That's where you start. When you start your career at Susquehanna as an intern, the first thing they, they, they have you do is learn how to play poker. Why do they do that? Because it teaches you how to think about the world in probability and risk terms. Everything they, that they uh, that their traders need to understand as to how to trade is based is rooted in their ability to understand probabilities, risk reward, and then uh, size their trades appropriately based on what they have in front of them. And Susquehanna is f infamous or famous for running annual poker tournaments across the entire firm and co consistently uh, every single week having smaller poker games played throughout the, the trading floor in order to hone their traders' skills. And the reason, like I said, the reason for this is because they can effectively simulate thousands of risk trade uh, risk taking decisions in the matter of weeks and show their um and, and teach their traders trade teach their their uh, interns and the people who are starting out at their at their firm how to learn the specific strategy and building kind of that muscle memory for taking on risk versus ma making decisions from an emotional perspective as traders as humans especially if you are um, struggling with your trading, if you're not consistent in your trading, what happens is we make decisions from an emotional perspective. And you can see it from why we double down when we are losing money and why we take money off the table when we're profitable um, or we take profits too early. That's an emotional decision that we're making. And playing poker is designed to help you overcome that and make the exact opposite decision when you should be um, cutting losses when the trades go against you and when trades go in your favor, adding more exposure, adding more uh, profits because what you've thought was going to be true is playing out. Now is not the time to be reducing exposure. Now is the time to be increasing exposure. And that is very counterintuitive. And it's, 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 you can learn those. You can learn that conceptually or learn that intellectually. But when it comes time to actually taking on risk, we struggle to do that. And with trading, you may not get enough trades under your belt to actually learn that process. And you may not be trading frequently enough to kind of build a muscle memory. But poker playing allows you to play thousands of hands in a matter of a few weeks and really build in that muscle memory of learning how to bet appropriately. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay, so... I'm presuming that some of you have a basic understanding of poker, but many of you may never have played poker ever before. So let's just go over some basic rules because in every single poker hand, you have four opportunities to place a bet. Um, well, well, technically you have to place the first bet to be in the game. So technically you have three decisions to make when it comes to placing a bet. You have your pre-flop, your flop, your turn, and then your river. Uh, those are your four opportunities to place a bet. And each of those requires a decision to either fold your hand, check, or bet more money to, to stay in the game. And each time that you are at a stage where you have to make a bet, you are either betting or responding to a bet. And whether what you do at that particular stage is based on the probability and the odds because you're dealt a hand and you have a general sense or in theory, there is a theoretical probability of winning with every single hand that is dealt, right? The hand, the the po the hands, the the cards that you have in your hands, and the and the cards that are on the table. Um, at every single stage, you theoretically can know what the probabilities are winning for that specific hand that you have, and then you have a a, a, um, a calculation of how much can you win, which is based on how much money is in the pot versus how much money you have to bet in order to be part of that pot. How much do you have to risk to potentially win that pot? And it's a matter of calculating probabilities versus risk to reward that helps you determine whether you want to um, uh, bet or fold, right? Now, that's the element that is going to be a little different between poker versus trading because 
yes, you have probability and risk to reward in trading, but it's not the same probability as poker playing. However, you think in the exact same terms, even though there are different probabilities and different risk to rewards. And effectively, what you have to decide is when the odds are stacked against you, you have to fold. You have to try to preserve your capital because if you keep playing hands where the st odds are stacked against you, in the long run, you should, you're going to lose money. On the flip side, if the stacks of the odds are stacked in your favor, you have to take advantage of those opportunities and size up your bets. And in the reality of trading and the reality of poker is that close to 60, 70, maybe even 80% of the hands that you play are largely small wins, small losses that basically wash each other out. It's really the other 10 to 20% of the time where you size up your bets, where you can potentially basically hit your home runs and be a profitable trader or be a profitable poker player. Um, the, that's the reality of it. You know, the vast majority of your trades are not going to be winners or necessary losers. The vast majority of your trades should basically largely be about preserving capital. And then what you're doing is you're preserving your capital, waiting for those opportunities to come about where you do get that trade right or the, st or the odds are stacked in your favor. And that's when you step up to the, you step up to the plate and you bet big on those particular hands. And that's really kind of what poker can help you learn how to do. Be disciplined in preserving your capital, being patient, and when the opportunity comes, seizing that opportunity. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. All right. So let's now talk a little bit about trading, right? So preserving capital is by far the first and foremost important thing that you have to learn whether you're a trader or playing poker. And you know, there's a great, there's a fantastic book written on this concept, uh, which is written by a religious philosopher actually in the 1980s by an author named James P. Kars. Uh, he was an NYU professor, nothing to do with finance or, or, or trading or business or anything like that. Like I said, he was a religious philosopher and he wrote a book called Finite Versus Infinite Games. And many of you may have heard of this term. Uh, there are many applications of this concept in, in, in business. So if, you have, if you're a professional, if you've ever been to professional training um, courses, some of them have introduced this concept here. Simon Sinek is a, um, a, 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 an advocate for this specific um, way of thinking. Um, but, you know, he, he theorized that there's two types of games in the world. There's finite and infinite games. Finite games are, are ones that we're all familiar with, you know, where you have fixed rules. Uh, the game is to, is uh, the game ends at a certain point And at the end of the game, you declare a winner or a loser. So a good example of this is basketball, football, chess. These are games where you have a, the goal of the game is to win. And at the end of the game, there is declared a winner or a loser. And then on the flip side, he said, there's a second type of game. There's a, call, a game called a finite, an infinite game. Um, and in an infinite game, there are no agreed upon rules. Uh, there's It never ends. And you either have players or you have dropouts, meaning you either have the resources to continue playing or you no longer have the resources to continue playing in that game. And a good example of this is running a business, right? You can't win at running a business. You are either in business, meaning you either have the amount of capital, uh, funds, or whatever it is to stay in business, or you've, banked, you've, you've bankrupted your company and you can no longer stay in business. Same thing with trading. You can't win at trading. You can either have the capital to continue trading or lose the capital where you cannot trade anymore. Um, there are plenty of, of, of parallels that you can draw with this. And you can think of poker playing as the same thing, right? You can't win at playing poker. You can win a tournament in playing poker, but you can't win the game of poker. There's no winning. You either have enough cash to continue playing or you've lost all your money and you can't play poker anymore. So in that particular instance, you know, we think of poker as like a game that you can win or lose. And many times we think of trading as something you can win or lose at, but in reality is you can't. And when you realize that, it shifts. It, com it should completely shift the way you think about that game, right? You know, I think there, there are some really fantastic business case um, studies of like, you know, when Apple launched the iPad versus what Microsoft was trying to do. I'm sorry, the iPod and what Microsoft was trying to do at the same time. And you look at the way they approached kind of uh, Apple approached the iPod versus Microsoft approached, I think it was called the Zune back then. 
very different way that they approached it. Microsoft clearly was in the game to win it, uh, and and Apple was playing the long game. Um, and when you're playing the a game to win that you can't win at, you will eventually lose at. And that's really kind of the fallacy that a lot of traders fall under. They're trying to figure out how do I win at trading. But the reality is that you can't win at trading. There's no such thing as winning at trading. If you keep trying to win a game that can't be won, you're going to eventually lose. Um, so that is a pretty, um, uh, it's a it's a concept that's pretty far out there if you've never heard this before and it takes a little bit of time to internalize it. But once you do, it completely changes your view on how you approach the game. Because if you think about running a business, you know, you can't, if you can't win at running a business, what do you do? You have to make sure you stay in business. So the same thing with trading and same thing with poker. So let's talk about practically how do you actually take what we've learned into something that you can do. And that's where we go back to the golden rule of trading. Never exceed more than 1% to 2% of your total account value on any single trade. Now, you can you you apply a similar type technique when you're playing poker, right? Where every single trade that you place, you can't lose, or at least your initial bet, you don't bet more than a certain amount. And the idea is that, you know, when you first start out, you don't really know how, how a trade is going to work out, right? The first place, the first trade that you make on a specific idea, you have no idea how it's going to place, how it's going to work out. You must preserve your capital. So you, you want some exposure, but you want that exposure to be relatively small. I'm not going to go into the math of this because I've actually done separate sessions on the math behind why the 1% to 2% rule is so important. But the rule of thumb is that you never risk more than 1% to 2% of your initial account value on that first a, a, a trade that you're making on a specific idea. Number one, smaller losses are easier to let go. So you place a small trade and immediately doesn't go in your favor, you let it go. It's like placing a small bet, playing a poker hand. All of a sudden, you know, uh, uh, the hand comes out, and your probability of winning is pretty low. It's easy to fold a small, you know, a small bet. It's much harder to fold when you've got a lot of money on the table, right? So if you come out of the gate risking five, ten percent of your account, and that trade starts to go against you. What do you do? You start sweating it. You start you you really start you know having emotional issues of dealing with that loss. And you and you when you should be taking the loss, you do you don't have the capabilities of doing so. You effectively freeze in your tracks because you just can't help but just sit there and not respond because you just physically can't do it. You know, we've all been there if you've traded too large. Um, and that's why we always have to start small. Preserving capital is number one. And once the trade goes in your favor, that's when you now have a lot of options. But if you don't, if you blow up your account to begin with, you're never going to be in that position where you can potentially try to hit home runs. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So preserving capital is number one. Number two is adjusting winners. What do I mean by this? Is meaning, you know, a lot of the, the most common question that I get, um, and this is something that we're actually going to cover um, next week. Brian is actually going to be doing a session on this next week. The number one question that I get as a strategist um, is someone would come to me and say, hey, I've placed this trade. I've lost money on the trade. What can I do to adjust it to turn my loser back into a winner? Um, and I always tell that person, you know, it's not worth it. Just cut your losses and move on to the next trade. Um, but no one listens. Everyone wants to figure out how do I turn my lo small losing trade back into a winner? Because the thought process is if I can turn my losers back into winners, I'll be a profitable trader in the long run. And that almost never happens. Um, you know, Because if you can manage to turn your losers back into a winner, most of the time you end up just at a wash, even if you're able to do so. And number two, most strategies that help you turn a loser back into a winner requires you to take on more risk, which simply means that you open yourself up for even even more, a bigger loss, right? Um, so that never works out in the long run. However, what does work out in the long run is that when you have a trade, when you place a trade and that trade is starting to work out, what you do is you focus your energy on adjusting your winners. Time and time again, I see traders focusing their attention on the wrong thing. They're focusing on how to turn their losers back into winners. They're not focused on how do I turn my winners into home runs. Um, and that is the 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 the, um, the what the game of poker can help you hone that skill because, like I said, you can run th thousands of hands in a short span of a few weeks and really kind of 
start to build that that muscle memory of like, okay, when trades are not when poker hands are not going my favor, I let go of the small losses. I learn how to preserve my capital. And when I when I do have a hand that is worth playing and I clearly have the probability stacked in my favor, I I I I build the muscle memory of jumping in then and not only jumping in, but jumping in with the right sizing. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a couple of minutes. But when the market confirms that your outlook is correct, that's when you want to add exposure, not take profits, right? And we're all guilty of this, right? Where, you know, you place a trade, the trade immediately goes in your favor. And what do you do? Instead of holding on to that trade and maybe sticking to your original guns and sticking to your thesis, you take the profit off because you're thinking to yourself, oh, I've made a quick profit. I can never go wrong taking profits. Uh, and you know, we, I, you might have even heard that term. Someone might have told you, you never go wrong taking profits. But I will tell you that. Um, or to, sorry, taking profits early. But um, what you can do by taking profits early is never, ever put yourself in a position where you can hit home runs and become a profitable trader. So when you're given that trading opportunity, continue with it with the potential to try to hit that home run we'll talk a little bit about how that how, how that works because you know the, the 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 thought process that we have that prevents us from doing that is that we're afraid when a trade goes in our favor if we don't take profits that it's going to turn back into a loss at some point point. and psychologically for some reason as humans when we have a trade that's winning, if that winning trade turns back into a loss, we have a really, really tough time dealing with that. Um, but in reality, you should be okay with that because the when, when you turn a small winner uh, and you add more exposure and maybe that doesn't work out and you end up losing money on the trade, Yes, you lost money on that trade, but if you kept replicating that every single time that that opportunity comes out, eventually times will work out in your favor. And those are the times where you're going to have huge home runs that's going to offset a large number of small losing trades. And it's really hard to see that because you have to get hundreds of trades, thousands of trades sometimes under your belt before you can recognize those patterns. And most people just never get there. Most people never build the resiliency to actually do it enough times to see that it works in the long run. Um, and that's why I advocate playing poker because po po poker playing is very, very similar in nature. And you are basically contracting thousands of of hands in, into a few weeks of time, and you can build that muscle memory and actually see the results of that type of change in behavior and what that means for your bottom line. And you can do it with um, you know, free poker at first if you don't believe me and, and you want to test out the theory, but th that's something that you can do. And, and you just can't really do that from trading. Even if you have a demo account that you can trade, it's hard to get a few thousand trades under your belt to the point where you can really get that feeling of how do I preserve my capital and step up to the plate when the trade really or when the hand is really worked in my favor. So adjusting winners is not an art. It's an art, not a science. There's no necessarily rules as to when uh, the market confirms your outlook. Unlike poker, you only have four, you know, four opportunities to place a bet. You know, it's very structured. Um, you know, you know exactly when you can bet or fold. When you're playing the markets, there's there's not the same rules. You can add exposure at any time. You can reduce exposure at any time. When do you go about doing that? So we'll talk a little bit about that. But you know. Uh, but before you even get to that point, most people never even get to this point of figuring out when do I add exposure or when do I cut exposure because they're constantly in this um, in in the fog of uh, when the trades are not going my favor. That's when I'm going to spend all my energy trying to turn these small winners, uh, small losers, back into winners. And you don't focus any attention on your winners. You just keep taking profits, small profits here and there, and you never get ahead. If you if you relate to that, again, play type one into the chat window. If you struggle with that as a trader where you constantly find yourself seemingly never capable of turning your 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 losers back into winners, and then your winners, you know, they they keep they seemingly are always small, too small to offset your overall losses. Perfect. Okay. I see a lot of ones, and I, you know, I know from my experience working with you know, tra thousands of traders over the last 18 years, this is the number one theme that I see. And hopefully I can show you a, a different path 
out from the, 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 the cycle that you might be finding yourself stuck in. Okay. So this is arguably the hardest part to actually learn when you have your real money on the line, because it basically goes against every single thing that the, every single fiber of your being is telling you not to do this. Okay. And this is something that you're going to want to progress. Uh, if you're going to go down the route of trying to uh, take poker as a way to hone your skills, because this is what traders at Susquehanna are being taught every single day when they start their careers at Susquehanna and they hone their skills throughout their entire career at Susquehanna playing poker is learning this specific skill of how to adjust trade, you know, winning hands or, or rather hands that are stacked in your favor or, or trades that are starting to work out in your favor. And it, like I said, the 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 uh, the, the skill set that you're trying to learn here is when the trade is going in your favor, how do you size up your bets? And there's a and you know this is a progression, right? The first progression, you know, when you first learn this concept, is to simply add a fixed percentage, a fixed size to each time that you find yourself in a position where the trade is going in your favor. So let's say you buy a stock. I'm going to use an equity example first, just to make this really simple, right? Let's say you buy a stock at $100. Whoops. You buy a stock at $100, right? So that's your first initial investment. You think the stock's going to go up, you buy the stock at $100. let us say you risk 2% of your account to buy uh, this particular stock at $100. Now, let's say a, uh, you know, a few weeks later, the stock is now trading at, um, I don't know, 105 right? So the trade has gone in your favor. So your thesis that this stock is going to go higher is correct. Now, the 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 the, the natural thing that your body that your your mind is going to tell you to do is take some profits, take some profits off the table. You made some money. You're right. Get out and reduce your exposure. But the reality of what you know, poker players and what Susquehanna is teaching their traders to do is when the market proves you to be right, now is your opportunity to try to size up and try to hit a home run, right? How do you size up? Maybe at this point, what you do is instead of taking profits, you buy another 2% of your portfolio at 105. And, and the idea is that, you know, once in a while, you know, you actually get the trade right and the stock really runs and the stock takes off, right? How do you make sure that you when those when those opportunities come, you really seize the day, if you will, right? So if the stock starts to move up, you buy another two percent, and let's say the stock now goes up to one ten. Um, most traders at this point would be wildly uh, happy at this point and taking all of their profits. But Susquehanna is teaching their traders to do the exact opposite: buying more, um, basically continuing to bet. Uh, that that stock can continue to move higher. You obviously have to figure out a time as to when you stop, but most people never even get to the point of figuring this out, of even adding exposure when the trade is working in your favor. But the idea is that occasionally you do get things right. And you just want to make sure that in the occasions that when you get things right, you are able to continue placing your bets and adding exposure so that by the time you get into the, by the time you're getting out of the trade, you are risking substantially more than what you originally got in at. And you can turn what is a small winner into a huge winner. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, those huge winners will offset a large number of small losing trades. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay. Now, like I said, this concept of adding more exposure, you can it's it's not an it's not a science, it's an art, but you know, the progression of what you want to learn by playing poker is at first you start by adding a fixed amount, right? So you place you place a bet, maybe you pet, uh, you know, you bet uh, you know, let's say theoretically $5 on a poker hand to start out with, right? And as the as the as the river as the flop comes out, you realize that hey, you know what? These look pretty good in terms of my odds. I'm going to bet another $5. Um and then by the time the 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 turn comes out, you bet another $5 and if it continues to work out, the river comes out, you bet another $5. Um you know, that is a fixed amount. That's a first starting point of kind of overcoming your um, your fears of continuing to add exposure when the trade is clearly starting to prove that your thesis is correct, okay? But that is rarely actually going to get you ahead of the game. If every single time you increase your exposure, you're increasing it at a fixed amount. 
it can help you get in that direction, but it's it, 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 and it'll help you hit, get some bigger wins, but it's not going to help you really hit those big home runs, those grand slams that sometimes make your 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 weeks and sometimes makes your year as a trader. Um, what you want to learn as a trader is to think about sizing up even more. So what that means is that instead of let's say risking one percent of your uh, your account every single time you size up, you you size up linearly. So maybe you, you establish the trade initially by risking 1% of your portfolio. As the trade proves your, uh, if the trade proves you to be right, you now add 2% of your exposure of your portfolio. And if you get a third opportunity, you add 3% of your portfolio. And then if you get a final one, maybe you add a 4% of your total portfolio. So you start the trade off risking 1% of your portfolio. By the time you're done, you're risking 7% of your portfolio. So even though you're adding to the trade three times, you're scaling up your trade seven times in terms of exposure. So that's really where you can make some significantly big gains if you do get some of these big moves um, uh, on the specific trade. And if the trade works against you, you know, you basically try to get out of the trade at a relatively small loss relative to your initial size. And because you already have a, you know, if let's say you get to that 3% time, 3% uh, place and the stock starts to pull back, well, you know, the, you have the losses on the 3% position, but you have gains on the 1% to 2% that's going to offset some of that so that your total loss on the trade should not be significantly larger than what you initially risk when you only risk 1% of your trade. You might end up losing 2% of your account on that, but the whole the goal here is that even when you size up, your losses when they do take out should not be more than 1% to 2% of your total account value to begin with. So, you know, you still have to manage your losses. You still have to preserve capital, but you're doing it, you're basically um, putting yourself in a position by preserving capital so that when the time comes, you size up appropriately. Does that make sense? Everyone, please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And the the kind of the, the goal of all of this, right, is that and, and playing poker helps you kind of get to there, was, was you want to think about potentially adding exposure at an exponential level. Um, and what that means is that you start your position, maybe you risk 1% of your account. Uh, why, by the time the trade starts to work in your favor, you look at maybe adding 2%. And then the next time, instead of adding 3%, you double it, you add another 4%. And if you ever get to that position where you are able to add that final one, you're adding 8%, you're basically adding your exposure at an exponential level. And the idea is that, you know, occasionally you do get these big runs in a specific stock. And when you do, you want to make sure that you are capturing that and sizing up appropriately. It sounds really scary and it very well, uh, you know, is taking on a lot of exposure. But what you're trying to build is the muscle memory of learning to take on big exposure only when it makes sense. And, it's a progression, right? You're not going to get there on day one. On day one, you're going to be fixed amount, right? You know, that's kind of where you have to first start because right now you're not even doing that. Right now, you're actually doing the exact exact opposite. When the trade goes in your favor, you're reducing your exposure, not adding exposure. So the first thing that you want to learn is just reversing that, that um, behavior of when things go in your favor, add exposure. And then what you want to do is you want to add exposure at an, inc at an increasing level. So maybe instead of adding it at a linear, you know, from a fixed level, you add a linear level. And then once you feel comfortable with the linear level, then you add it to an exponential level. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, if you look at poker uh, um, traders, at, you know, at Susquehanna and what they're learning, they're learning how to do this stuff at the very end. They're learning of how to protect their capital at, at all costs. And then when the time comes, they are adding exposure at an exponential level and they're trying to hit these huge home runs. And that's why hedge funds like Citadel and Susquehanna make billions of dollars every single year, no matter what market conditions are, uh, you know, because they think of markets not from a up-down perspective, they think of everything from a probability and a risk-reward perspective. And that kind of completely changes the way you think about trading, the way you think about um, uh, about taking on risk. And I, I on, and there's there's no better game in my opinion that helps you learn how to do that and build that skill set than playing poker. Um, nothing helps you learn faster, and nothing helps you hone the specific skill set that's required than playing poker. Um, so, 
I don't know how many of you are poker players. I'm guessing some of you are. Most of you probably are not. Uh, my suggestion is that if you uh, want to take on my my advice, is that you start off by playing free games. And the goal of that is just simply learn the rules of playing poker. And it's just started getting a sense for probability and risk to reward and what that even means. And that requires a little bit of more research on that. Um, there are plenty of tools out there to help you learn these things. Um, and the, unfortunately, these tools aren't particularly helpful for, for trading. They're obviously only helpful for calculating odds and risk to reward for playing poker, but it helps you start thinking in probability and risk to reward terms. And when you start thinking about probability probability and risk reward terms, that's when things start, start to click and you're going to start to learn how to do that for your trading. Um, okay. And then when it comes to actually uh, placing some real money poker games, I think the better game to play is tournaments versus cash games. Tournaments, you know, you, you, you have a buy-in, you know, it could be as little as $5 or $10. Um, and you are playing potentially hundreds of hands um, and you're just trying to win that tournament, right? And, and the reason for that is because one, when you play a tournament, you pay the $5 to $10, you can obviously spend more. But if you put in, let's say $10 for a tournament and you lose that tournament, that's that's all you lose, right? You're, you're limiting your, your capital loss to begin with. But when you're playing a tournament, it's very much um, a, a infinite game. You're playing almost like an infinite game. Even though you're winning, you're playing to win in that particular case, it's the closest that you have to an infinite game when you're playing a tournament and you're you're losing you're limiting your losses in that specific trade versus if you're playing a cash game you can just keep playing and keep losing money and and you know the, there's there's it's hard sometimes to figure out um, exactly where to stop playing if you're playing a cash game and you're losing money versus a tournament you know you play your five you put in your five or ten bucks you either stay in the tournament or you or you get um, um, thrown out or, or you lose in the tournament, right? So very much kind of like that. Can you stay in, in business or are you going to go bankrupt kind of mentality when you're playing a tournament? So I think tournaments, in my opinion, are better at honing this specific skill set. And that's specifically why if you look at... Um, uh, firms like Susquehanna, they run annual poker tournaments for that specific reason. And then, you know, this is just about doing consistently and building that muscle memory. If you do it, you know, consistently, it, just within a few weeks, you're going to notice a very clear change in the way you think about um, risk-taking, the way that you think about preserving capital and the way that you think about like, oh, I'm like, my only role is to just continue preserving capital until the odds are stacked in my favor, then I pounce, you know, and trading is very much the same way. And, you know, most people don't realize this because most people never get there. But if you look at a professional trader, 67% of their trades are largely kind of just washing each other out. They're not, they're not winning 70% of their trades. But the 30% of their trades that are winners, though they they really hit home runs. You see the most successful traders. You look at hedge funds, you know, look at the PLs of hedge fund traders. They're, they're washing out the vast majority of their trades, you know, or it's a small gain or a small loss. It's really a few big trades that make their, their month and their year, or their quarter. Um, and, and, you know, that's part of why sometimes, you know, hedge fund manager returns are kind of very lumpy, right? You know, they're not consistent. Like, you know, the Bernie Madoff where you're making 1%, 2% every single year is not realistic because it's not real. No one, no trader is able to consistently do that. Traders are more likely to have very lumpy returns throughout the year. You know, they might have a few months where just nothing happens. And then one month they really hit it out of the park because, um, you know, they're, they realize that they're not in the game of trying to figure out where markets are going necessarily. Uh, they obviously have an intuition and a, and, and a skill in doing so, but, you know, the actual skill that they're doing is preserving capital and waiting for uh, when the market proves their thesis or their outlooks to be actually correct. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so um, what I wanted to talk a little about, uh, a little bit, of is, is some of the tools that you have available to you at Options Play to help you um, uh, to help you do the things that I'm uh, I, I've been talking to you about here. So a, a couple of things that are important for your trading. Number one, preserving capital. First and foremost, when you're using the Options Play tool, no matter what uh, strategy that you are looking at within Options Play. Um, 
always, always, always use the risk and investment calculator. How many of you by, uh, you know, type one into the, uh, type yes into the chat window if you've used the risk and investment calculator in options play. And type no if you've never used it or, or didn't know that there was a risk and investment calculator. Okay, I see a, a, quite a number of yeses and I'm fin very glad that many of you are using it, but I see an equal number of no's, if not slightly more no's. Um, this is your number one tool that you should be using to help you preserve your capital. Um, so what you do is you can use the risk and investment calculator for any strategy you're looking at within options play. And you want to go to your profile, which is a setting that you can uh, access here within your risk and investment calculator, and you plug in your portfolio value. So let's say you have a $100,000 portfolio. Um, we will default you to 2%. So we never exceed 2% of your total account value on any given trade. So a $100,000 portfolio risking 2% is $2,000. So you can save these settings in your portfolio setting. And what that allows you to do is every single time you go to the risk and investment calculator, you can click on the calculate button and it will calculate the maximum number of contracts that you can trade for whatever strategy you're looking at within options play. And the max risk here will be within $2,000. And this is what's going to help you preserve your capital to begin with. Okay. And once you get into a trade, right? So let's say I'm looking at buying this Apple 232.55 call vertical, right? Right now it's got a 35% uh, probability of profit. Well, if I click on this trade button and I add this trade into my paper trading portfolio, okay, let's add this trade into my paper trading portfolio. The options play tool can help you track the probability of profit of that trade as it ages. So um, I'm looking at this 232.55. As you can see, it's got a probability of profit of 35%. As that trade ages, I can track the probability of profit and how that's changing. And basically what you're doing is that as that probability of profit works, uh, increases in, in nature, those are your opportunities to start adding exposure to that trade. And this is something that over time, you're going to start getting a sense for how much does that probability of profit have to tick in my favor and before I think about adding exposure and how far does it tick against me? Do I think about cutting losses? But when you're playing poker, every single time a hand is dealt or every single time, um, uh, you know, yeah, a hand is dealt, your, your odds change. And what you're doing is you're making decisions based on those changes in the odds. And that is what um, playing poker teaches you to do, right? Four times every single, every single game, you have a probability or an odds that you have to calculate and decide based on those that probability, whether it's time for you to fold or bet uh, more, right? And that's what the same thing you're doing as a trader is you're placing a trade on, you know, there's a certain probability of success as you enter the trade. And as the trade ages, that probability either works in your favor or starts to go against you. The same way every single time a, a new hand is dealt as part of a play poker, your odds change and you have to decide what do you want to do, right? Either the odds are start, starting to get better and better in your favor, or at least the risk reward is getting better in your favor and you're making the decision to bet larger, or you're finding yourself that the trade is going in the wrong direction. And what you're doing is you're, you want to effectively fold or at least check, meaning not bet any more money. So that's really kind of what uh, poker playing is allow, allows you to kind of hone that specific skill and do it in a very, very short amount of time or much more condensed timeline than it would take to build the skill set by learning how to trade from a paper trading account or a demo trading account. You can sort of get there over a long period of time, but it's going to take you a long period of time. Playing poker is a much, much faster way to get to that same skill set, okay? Um, so those are some of the tools that you have available to you here at, at Options Play to help you correlate what you learn from poker playing into actually applying those same skill sets into trading. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. Um, what we are going to do is open this up for Q&A, but before I do, I will post this link here on the screen here one more time for those of you that want access to the recording and the slides, or if you don't currently have access to Options Play to help you track the probability of your open trades and uh, help you calculate the appropriate number of contracts to trade to preserve your capital, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial at optionsplay.com. And also for those of you that are looking for our other videos, you know, like I said, I've had other videos on um, 
on the math behind kind of the golden rule of trading, that one to 2% rule. I've done lots of sessions before on kind of the, the, the mentality and mindset of a profitable trader. You can find that on our YouTube channel, which we just posted that link into the chat window. Please hit subscribe when you go to that YouTube channel so that you can get access to all of our videos going forward when we post them. Okay, so let's um, turn this over to Q&A. There's a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Type your questions in the chat window, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for today. Do you include cash as part of your total portfolio? Yes, uh, you would inclu uh, include cash as, as part of your total portfolio value. Um, at what point do you take losses? So, um, you know, most strategies, we have a very clear rule of thumbs as to how much money do you lose before you you um, take a loss. Um, you know, some strategies have fixed uh, fixed uh, risk and you can effectively hold those till expiration and effectively kind of take on the full risk, right? And uh, other strategies, we tend to find that you generally don't want to risk more than 50% of what you've paid. So if you buy, buy a call or a put, you know, once you lose 50%, so let's say you buy a call option and it, and it has a 30% probability of success when you enter it. By the time that call option, if it loses 50% of the value you pay, you're going to find that the probability of profit on that trade is probably close to the 10 to 15%. And at that point, it's just time to take your losses because your chances of getting back to, to break even on those are so low, it doesn't make sense to not preserve the other half of that one, the other 2% that you've risked on that trade for your next trade, just in hopes that you might be able to turn that back into a break even. So um, it depends on the strategy. Um, <clears throat> it depends on the strategy, but we actually have rules based on each strategy as to when you might wanna, <clears throat> when you might wanna cut those losses. <clears throat> Um, there's a question here about chat GPT. Um, you know, I'll just quickly answer your question, even though it's not relevant to here. You know, the 20 the paid version of chat GPT only gives you access to <clears throat> a sort of unlimited or, or more messages. The free version restricts the number of, of chats and messages that you can do at, at once. <clears throat> the 2% rule, 2% of what? 2% of your total account value, right? So you kind of take the net liquidation value of your portfolio, 2% of that. <clears throat> at what point do you take profits? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I would say that first get to the point where you've kind of honed these skills before you get to that point, because that that's kind of the, the last part. And I would say that's arguably um, the easier part to learn because, you know, you have a specific set of rules that helped you get into the trade or, or formed your bullish thesis, right? You should use that same framework to determine when you are no longer bullish on that specific stock, right? So if you buy a stock because for fundamental reasons, right? Or you buy a stock because of technical reasons or a combination of both, then you have a framework to determine why you think that stock is bullish. So you basically continue holding on to the trade as long as that framework continues to confirm your bullish thesis, right? So if you have a technical level, if you have a fundamental view on the stock, you basically keep at it until the fundamental or technical view changes your views, right? So let's say you buy something because it's rel relatively cheap from a valuation perspective. When do you take profits? You take profits once the valuation is get gets to a point where you say, this is fully valued or this is overvalued. Um, or vice versa, if you're using technical analysis, right? You, you're trading a breakout. Well, yeah, that breakout has a, a target level, right? As to when the next level of resistance is. So that might be your reason as to where you want to take profits, right? So the look at why you got into the trade, that's going to help you answer when you want to take profits. But most people never even get to that point because they never learn these specific skills that as the trade goes in my favor, instead of taking profits early, I mean, I mean, people are taking profits early instead of adding exposure. So you never really get to that point where you're truly answering the question of when should I be taking profits because everyone's just taking profits too early. <clears throat> Um, I saw a lot of questions similar to that. So hopefully that kind of answered that question. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, people were asking me about like, you know, what poker uh, <clears throat> games to play. You know, it really depends on your geographical, <clears throat> where you live. So I would say that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> not only depends on where you live from a country perspective, it also determines uh, where you live from a state perspective. So it's really hard for me to tell 
I would say go on Google. There's no shortage of poker uh, gaming sites that are probably trying to win your business that it's not easy to find places to play poker online. Um, <clears throat> what delta should we choose in buying a call in zero DTE? Um, not related to what we're talking about here today, but generally speaking, if and when, uh, you know, and I've done a webinar specifically on this, very, very few days uh, make sense to be buying zero days to expiration options. But there are about 10% of days where you can, uh, where it might make sense to do that. And, you know, even in the 10% of the days where it might make sense, probably 60 to 70% of the time it doesn't work out. It's the 30 to 40% of the time when it does work out uh, that when it when it kind of makes your, your week or your month. And those particular cases, you're generally buying a 30 to 40 delta. So a slightly out of the money call option in those specific instances, because you need to hit home runs on the days that do um, uh, work out to offset all of the days that it doesn't work out. Um, Vincent, like, you know, you're asking a really, Vincent's asking a great question. When you're playing poker, you're playing against, you know, the other person, right? Just as much as you're playing the cards, you know, how does that translate to trading? You know, that's really where some of that stuff doesn't translate as much. Um, you know, like uh, you can sort of think of like reading the other player as reading kind of charts or reading kind of fundamental analysis where it's an imperfect science and you're just trying to get a, a gauge for things, right? Um, but, you know, I wouldn't go too far in trying to draw parallels between that. Um, so yeah, it is, there, there are differences, right? What's, what's, what is the same is the concept of bet sizing. Um, those are identical between trading versus poker. And the benefit of poker is that you can condense hundreds and thousands of, of hands in a few days, in a few weeks, that you just can't do when you're trading. Um, and, and, and there's something to do about building that muscle memory over hundreds and thousands of hands. That's going to help you kind of shortcut this process of learning how to become better at preserving capital and betting when the, when the time is right. How do you deal with fear and greed in trading? Um, exactly what we're teaching you right now is, is learning to not uh, take, you know, fear and greed is, is an emotion, right? <clears throat> and we're making these uh, these decisions based on these emotions right now. And what poker player, uh, what playing poker teaches you to do is to sort of ignore those emotions um, and go with what, uh, <clears throat> go against what your emotions are trying to tell you to do. Because what your emotions are telling you to do is counterintuitive for trading or a success in trading. How do you calculate the probability in poker? Well, I mean, it's uh, the, uh, the 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 probabilities are 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 calculated for you. That's the thing. It's like you know, if you don't know how to do it, you can either read books or you can just use an online calculator, because there are finite number of hands, right? Like, I mean, there's only fifty two cards, so there's a finite number of uh, possibilities. So when you're dealt a hand, there is a there is a very um, uh, um, what's the right word? Black and white um, set of probabilities of what of what what are the probabilities of your hand being able to win, right? So you know if you have pocket aces, your chances of winning are far larger than if you have you know a, a, a two ten unsuited. So um, <clears throat> that's really kind of where your um, uh, you know don't don't make this hard on yourself. Just use an online calculator, right? Like. You know, unless you plan on playing poker for a living, then learn how to memorize these probabilities and learn how to calculate it. But if you're just doing this to learn how to size your bets, just use an online calculator. There's no need to do this the hard way. <clears throat> how do you increase a multi-leg options trade once it's placed and it's moved in your favor? You just simply buy more contracts of the trade that you have, right? So for example, if let's say I have this, um, the example I just showed you before, um, uh, I bought the December 20th, 230, 255 when Apple's trading at 230. So let's say that Apple goes up to 235. Maybe I'll buy instead of two more contracts, I might buy three contracts of the same December 230, 255. My odds of winning at that point are higher, right? The thesis that I have that, uh, that Apple's going to go higher is proven myself to be correct. 
my, maybe my upside target is 255. So when it go, reaches 235, I'm going to buy a little bit more. And if it reaches 240, I'm going to buy a little bit more. If it reaches 245, I buy a little bit more. And, and it's just sizing up as every time you do it is kind of what you do. Um, you could also at that point maybe adjust your position as well, right? So like I said, there's an art to this, not a science. Maybe by the time you want to buy more, you dump the 230, 255, and you buy five contracts of the 235, 260, or two, 235, 255. You know, you, maybe you don't keep the original contracts. You buy new contracts. Contracts, but the new contracts, you're buying them at a larger size. Um, so you're kind of taking profits at your initial trade, but you're rolling those profits directly into the next trade. So you are still sizing up. Um, there's no hard and fast rule as to how you do this. Um, but like I said, most people never even get to that stage of, of even trying different st uh, styles of how to adjust. Most people just get stuck in this in, in, in the cycle that they're in right now, which is, you know, oh, I'm losing money. How do I turn my loss into a winner? And they completely forget their winners and how to adjust their winners. They're focused on, they take profits too early and they hold on to their losses way too long um, and they never get ahead. So what I'm trying to help teach you is a way to completely reverse that mindset and help you get ahead as a trader. Um, now, those are all the questions that I see here for today. I hope that this is helpful in giving you a better understanding of what it, what skill sets you or what things you can do to hone your skills to become a profitable trader, because I know that's why we're all here. I know that's what many people struggle with. And hopefully this gives you a very fresh perspective as to what you can potentially do to kind of get yourself um, onto the path of profitability and follow, you know, why why does the second largest market making firm trading firm in the world start every single trader off not by teaching them about the financial markets or about options, but teaching them poker? There's a reason for that. Um, and uh, and I hope that you guys can learn something from that as well. With that, thank you so much. Uh, have a great trading day. Next week, Brian will be here. He will be teaching you about some of the strategies to adjust losing trades back into a winner. Um, it is it is a skill set that can be used in, in the long run. I, I don't think it's the first thing that most people should learn, but it's for those of you that have gotten to the point where you are profitable, it absolutely is a skill set that can be useful. But in the meantime, for those of you that are struggling with reaching profitability, hopefully this gives you a very fresh perspective as to how you can potentially hone your skills to get towards that. Thank you so much and have a great trading week.